Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 722. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, in this video here, we have employees and dates. These are the hours that they worked each day. Here's their wage, and we need to get gross pay. Now, really what we want, and actually I have a bunch of columns hidden here between C and H, but uh, we can make our formulas with those hidden columns and it works just fine. The goal here is 4 hours 48 minutes times $15.45 plus 4 hours times this wage plus 8 hours times this wage etc. Now normally what we do is we probably take this time since it is a time value and multiply by 24. Now what does that mean? Well if you click in this cell and control 1 you can see we have on the number tab it's got a custom time format but if we were to apply general which means wipe away the number format you could see that 4 hours uh, 4 hours and 48 minutes is exactly point two through a 24 hour day. So that time value is actually underneath there's a decimal which is the proportion of one 24 hour day. So if we were to multiply 1545 times that it just wouldn't work. Right? Control Z. So normally what you do is just say equals this time times 24. Right? Oh what did it do there? Here's the formula times 24. It actually sucked the time number format here so I'm going to apply general and there's <coughs> a keyboard shortcut for general it is control shift tilde that's one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts because it will wipe away all the number format control shift tilde there it is 4.8 that's in hours right 0.8 of the way through 68 60 minutes um sorry for 48 minutes through 60 is 0.8 through 1 hour. So that's in hours and then you drag this over and then of course you could we'll get our wage right here. You could go ahead and say equals the sum of all of these hours right here times our 20 times our wage, right? And that would give us our amount. But we don't want to do that. We you know, we simply have time here. We don't want to do this here. So we're going to use uh, have to do an array because really we want 24 times each one of these values, right? No problem. Equals and now we're gonna do an operation on an array or a range of values. So instead of using sum to add, we're gonna use sum product. Sum product is awesome because it can handle an array. I can simply say, hey, take all of these here, all of those t time values, just like we did down here, times 24. And it knows what to do. Some product with this array here says 24 times each one of the values here. Now, we need to take that and then multiply it by the wage. And that formula right there just works like a charm. Copy it down. Those are our uh, gross pay amounts. Now, here let's add in a complication here. What if in some situations you have a final tally sheet. This is where you do your payroll, right? You do your gross pay, your your taxes, deductions, all that kind of stuff, and finally a net pay. But what if the formulas here are coming from a timesheet, right? And you have a formula like this. Well, that blank right here, what's sitting in that cell, up here, you can see there's nothing. So Excel will interpret it as a zero, and it can handle that just fine. But here, forget it. Our formula over here is trying to multiply uh, 24 and the wage. T um, whoa, those are uh, not correct there. I'm going to control shift tilde. Oh, look at that. I had the wrong number format for the uh, wages here. No problem. Um, this formula is going to multiply a blank right there times 24 times the wage and it says can't do that because you can't multiply text times a number. You get a value error. Value error means there's some, you either have the wrong operator or there's the incorrect thing in your formula like a word. No problem. We're going to do an array formula here. Now here's an interesting thing. Notice it says array there. It can handle array if the array is in that argument. But what we want to do is say if anything in that range is equal, is not blank, then we want to take it. But let's see what happens when we do that. If 
anything in that range. Logical test is going to be anything in that range. And I'm going to say not uh, less than, greater than, blank, which is double quote. Anything in that range is not blank. That's a logical test. As soon as you put more than one true into this argument right here, if dominates over some product, this is expecting one true. We're going to give it a lot. It is an array formula. And we can't avoid Control Shift Enter like we can with the sum product. No problem. We, we'll just continue with our formula. The value of true is simply that range right there. So when it gets down to here, right, it'll just skip over that because that one uh, is blank. We want all the ones that are not blank. Now, the value of true, that's that right there. We do not need a false. We can just close parentheses, and that'll do it. Now, watch this. Usually, people try to do this, and they say, oh, it's an array. It can handle array. Enter. It's going to give you a value, again, because the if trumps the sum product. So in this case, I like to just get rid of the sum product so people looking at it don't think, oh, this can handle array. So I use sum, control, shift, enter. Control Shift Enter is the keyboard shortcut you use to tell Excel this is an array formula. The curly brackets are Excel's way of communicating back to you this is an array formula when you, and I understand it is an array formula. Con copy down, and there we have our uh, gross pay. All right, that's a little um, fun with time when we have a timesheet with a bunch of times and we need to get gross pay. All right, see you next trick.